Welcome to Willy Way High School's English Rocks, where we look at what our students are doing in the classroom at the moment. Okay, uh, you tend to be working through uh, a unit called William Shakespeare and his tragedies, and some classes have been studying the tragedy of Macbeth. Okay, this is our final episode on the tragedy of Macbeth. We, we've looked at episodes on the significant role uh, the witches played in uh, exposing. Uh, Macbeth's harmatia or tragic flaw which was his vaulting ambition and we've also looked at the important role Lady Macbeth had in her strong persuasion in getting uh, Macbeth to commit regicide but today let's look at Macbeth himself now our first impressions of Macbeth were very very favorable oh brave Macbeth okay he was loyal to King Duncan okay and he was very very brave but ever since the witches have prophesied that he will be promoted to Thane of Cordor which he was his thoughts have become corrupted by this prospect that he will become king himself and the only way he can become king is committing regicide so let's start with act one scene seven where he's already having second thoughts I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which leaps itself and falls on the other. Macbeth fully understands the long-term consequences if he commits regicide. If the assassination was the end of the whole matter, then he would murder King Duncan straight away, and that would be it. But he knows regicide will always be on his conscience. And there'll be consequences to the order of the kingdom also. This whole thing about regicide will come back and haunt him and plague him. And it will also set precedence. If he murders King Duncan, then what stops others to do the same to him? Hence, he is inevitably doomed, depicted with the metaphor of the poison chalice that he will drink from. And Macbeth puts all... The reasons before him not to kill King Duncan. As a host, he should be protecting him in his castle. He is his king and a relative. He should be not murdering him. King Duncan was a benevolent king. And his murder will disturb both the kingdom and the heaven. Which goes back to the chain of being being disrupted. Everything and everyone will grieve his death. And despite all this reasoning, Macbeth admits that his only motivation to murder King Duncan is his harmatia or tragic flaw, which is vaulting ambition. And this reason only overwhelms every other reason not to do it. This vaulting ambition is the only thing that is driving him. After murdering King Duncan and the subsequent crowning of Macbeth as king, you would think that Macbeth and Lady Macbeth would be very, very ecstatic about realising their ambitions. Unfortunately, Macbeth immediately regrets what he's just committed. And he's plagued by all this guilt. So let's go to Act 2, Scene 2, and see his immediate regret we have scorched the snake not killed it so in act two scene two after murdering king duncan he immediately realizes the impact of murdering king duncan has on him it is best not to know himself and his regret to what he has just done is shown as he wishes king duncan could wake up with all the knocking that's happening and then we move to act Three, scene two, murdering King Duncan is by no means the end of the matter. With a snake symbolizing evil, they have merely scorched it, not killed it. For the rest of their lives, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth will eat with fear and suffer terrible nightmares at night. He would rather be dead and be at peace rather than be plagued by guilt. King Duncan is dead and he's not being bothered by anything anymore. Macbeth's downward spiral, or peripetia, has been incredible, okay? He's got so much blood on his hands with the murder 
of Banquo. Leon's escaped, of course. I guess Leon's was meant to be murdered also, but he escapes. But Banquo is murdered. He orders the murder of Macduff's family and all his servants. Right? So, a huge blow to Macbeth is the news that Lady Macbeth has died. And he reaches this huge low point. So let's go to Act 5, Scene 5 and see this low point. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. With so much blood on his hand, Macbeth is senseless. Horrors, died, as slaughterous thoughts have taken away all his feelings. Nothing arouses him, nothing startles him, nothing scares him. And in one of Shakespeare's greatest literary moments, Macbeth questions the value of life and the future is pointless. Macbeth personifies the future, tomorrow creeping onwards. Okay, now past yesterday's act like signposts that only lead to the alliterative dusty death. Lady Macbeth's premature death provokes Macbeth's sorrow and nihilism. Everything is pointless and just leads to death. And this nihilism is emphasised through three metaphors. Life being a brief candle and he implores it to go out, out. It is a hopeless actor who performs on the stage for a short time and once the performance is over he's heard no more. And life is only a tale told by idiots and after all that sound and fury which is life it means absolutely nothing in the end life means nothing the whole world is closing in on Macbeth and he has no one but himself so let's go fast forward to the final battle where he has before him Macduff don't forget he ordered the murder or the slaughter of all of Macduff's family and servants, right? So, Act 5, Scene 8, is it surrender or death? What will Macbeth choose? I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. Macbeth's hubris or excessive pride that he leads a charmed life has been completely shattered. The witches had prophesied none of woman born shall harm Macbeth, so Macbeth believed everyone was born of woman, so he was invincible. However, Macduff was a caesarean birth, untimely ripped. Finally, Macbeth realises the witch's mischief and their false promises and how they speak in riddles. He has been led falsely. He knows this now, but it's all too late. Refusing to surrender and become a laughingstock, the rabble's curse. The audience witnesses Macbeth's bravery return. He will fight to the death rather than surrender. He recounts the witch's false prophecies that he had believed. His fate is now in the hands of himself. So he calls Macduff to bring on the jewel. A redeeming quality right at the end. All too late, Macbeth has so much blood on his hands. So when Malcolm, King Duncan's son, announces the victory and is about to restore order because he is the rightful heir to the throne and the chain of being will now be chained again, linked again, right? He calls him a dead butcher. So the tragedy of Macbeth acts like a didactive text to Elizabethan audiences because they would have understood what Shakespeare was trying to get to, that someone's excessive ambitions, right, when they go wild and are uncontrolled, have fatal consequences. And Macbeth experienced an incredible downfall and gruesome death as a result of this. I hope I've helped you in understanding Macbeth a little bit better. Okay, I look forward to seeing you on probably another unit of work, okay, because this is the end of our studies on Shakespeare. So I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching.